joining us, I'm Christiana Ford. Yeah, and I'm meteorologist Mike Lestmay. Christiana, I gotta ask you, did you notice the snow as you were driving in this morning? Oh, Michael, I noticed it. I definitely noticed it as <laughs> soon as I walked outside this morning. Yeah, I know what you mean. I think we all did. And here's the thing. We're expecting more snow on not only Christmas Eve, but also on Christmas Day. I'm kind of looking forward to that. Are you? I'm looking forward to it on Christmas for sure. I want a white Christmas. You know what? And I think we do have a pretty good chance on seeing that. Let me show you what the three day forecast looks like. Temperatures in the mid 30s today. We're waking up to some snow showers. I think that by tomorrow you'll notice a rain snow mix by Monday. Although we could see a couple of snowflakes, most areas should begin to dry on out, which is the good news. But Christiana, I have even better news for you. I know that you're going to be looking forward to this. By this upcoming Friday, temperatures are going to be closing in not only into the mid 50s, but in some spots in Northeast Ohio, we could be talking about low 60s to wrap up the month of December. I know you're excited about that one. I'm so excited for Friday. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Michael. A quarter of the federal government has officially shut down for the first time in two years. Over 750,000 federal workers are affected by this partial shutdown. Lawmakers and President Trump could not reach an agreement on funding for the border wall between the United States and Mexico. The president says he will not sign a deal that does not fund the wall, while Democrats in the Senate telling him the wall won't happen. Hours before the midnight deadline, Trump tweeted a video of himself calling upon Democrats to agree to $5 billion in border wall funding. With a wall or a slat fence or whatever you want to call it, but we need a great barrier. Let's get out, let's work together, let's be bipartisan, and let's get it done. The shutdown hopefully will not last long. Here's Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer on the shutdown. We are willing to continue discussions on those proposals with the leader, the president, the Speaker of the House, and the leader of the House. All five are necessary to get something done. Negotiations are expected to continue at noon today between the House and the Senate. So what does this shutdown mean for you? Ray Strickland explains. When people hear the words government shutdown, eyes get big, people get concerned, but a reality, stay calm, come midnight when you blink, there won't be much of a difference for at least the average person. The show will go on for majority of Americans. Like for Christmas shoppers, no need to worry. Those last minute packages you ordered, the United States Postal Service got you covered. Your gifts will get there. As for holiday travelers, you're fine too. Amtrak will keep chugging along at Cleveland Hopkins. Planes will take off. TSA will be there. They just won't get paid. Now, how about if you're retired or on disability? Come January 1st, that Social Security check will be in the mail, business as usual. And as for veterans, the VA hospitals will stay open. Health care won't be affected, but nine federal departments and dozens of agencies will be. Places like the Department of Justice and Homeland Security are open, but no paychecks. At the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, trails there will be open, but the visitor center will close, bathrooms too, and no trash pickup. But the shutdown really hurts the federal workers, the American people. About 700,000 of them will be either temporarily out of a job or won't get paid for the work they do. That includes the FBI and the DEA, but also agencies like NASA Glenn right here in Cleveland. Workers there will be sent home without pay. Ray Strickland, Channel 3 News. Thanks, Ray. Analysts say anxiety about the shutdown was one factor as the stock market suffered its worst week in nearly a decade. The Dow fell more than 400 points Friday. The Nasdaq lost 195 points. The S&P 551. The market is on track to have its worst December since the 1930s. New this morning, two people are in critical condition after an apartment fire in Bedford last night. The city's fire department shared these pictures from the scene. This happened on Center Road in Bedford. Fire marshals are investigating and no word on any cause at this time. In Summit County, a Coventry Township woman pleaded guilty to killing her husband and hiding his body parts inside their home. 50-year-old Marcia Eubank faces charges of aggravated murder, tampering with evidence and abuse of a corpse. She will be sentenced in early February. A U.S. post office worker and her roommate are accused of stealing more than $47,000 in gift cards from the mail. 
federal agents say Jennifer Riccardi worked at a sorting machine at Cleveland's main post office, stealing gift cards and cash. Her roommate Joe Dennis was in on it too. And if people are able to provide us with the gift card number that is missing, then we can contact that company to say, hey, has this gift card been used? Agents say suspects took more than 1,500 cards and bought things like TVs, game consoles, and clothes. Police tell us Riccardi is cooperating. There is a warrant out for Dennis's arrest. It was a question of asking and receiving. That's what Browns QB Baker Mayfield is learning after telling fans they needed to show up to games at First Energy Stadium. And as Brandon Simmons tells us, players need to understand we've been through a lot. Remember this? The good news, the days of our quarterback search appear to be over. We've got Baker Mayfield now, and after a few wins, he wasn't shy about calling out fans after beating the Panthers. We'd love to have more fan support. We'd love to have more fan support. We'd love to have more fan support. But he wasn't here when we had to do this. We don't want to suffer through another season of zero wins or one win. It's, it's pathetic. We started off 2018 with an 0-16 parade to celebrate an abysmal season. But this year is different, so we'll give Baker a pass. He asked for a sellout, and that's what he got. Tickets are only available right now through resellers, and the cheapest ones are more than $100 for the upper deck, and that's rare. Baker appreciates it, but in a thank you message, it's clear he still wants more. So excited to see you on Sunday, but it's not just about being there. You got to be loud, too. We want the energy there. We want it to be very exciting for this last home game. Jeez, Baker, you want us to show up and be loud? You're asking for a lot. But to take us from 0-16 to a small, and I mean minute, chance to make the playoffs, we're willing to buy in with our wallets and our hearts. Just know that next year, expectations are high. Wideout Jarvis Landry knows what we're talking about. It definitely could be a special year for us next year, um, but we also have to finish this year. Brandon Simmons, Channel 3 News. Tomorrow's game is a rivalry against the Bengals. Who would have thought we'd be talking about being 7-7-1 after an 0-16 season? This Christmas gift doesn't quite fit in a box, but it's still a pretty sweet present. The LeBron James Family Foundation revealed a makeover of the Bout Street Community Center gym in Akron Friday for kids who attend this I Promise school. LeBron's mom was even there to watch kids' faces light up in excitement. You all deserve to have a gym this nice. Just as those critical community centers gave flight to LeBron's dreams, it's our hope that Bout Street will be that beacon for our kids as well. The gym has a new basketball hoop, wall padding, new scoreboard, and a fresh coat of paint and new LED lighting. That's a look at your top headlines. I'm Christiana Ford. Have a great day.